Saint Fintan of Dune. January 3rd is the commemoration of Saint Fintan uh, of Dune. Below is an account of his life, distilled from Canon O'Hanlon's article in Volume 1 of the Lives of the Irish Saints, which draws on the work of the work of the 17th century hagiologist Friar John Colgan. There are a number of Irish saints who bear the name Fintan, but the most famous of whom is probably Fintan of Clonog, whose life we can look at on his feast day, February 17. Saint Fintan of Dune is clearly delineated in the sources by being identified as the brother of Saint Finlugain, whose life we can look at as well on this day. Saint Fintan, patron of Dunbliask, now the parish of Dune, county of Limerick. The, the present Saint Fintan was, di was a different person from Saint Fintan, abbot of Clonog, whose acts are recorded on the 17th of February. Also from Saint Fenton, surnamed Muna, whose feast occurs at the 21st of October. Likewise, from Saint Fenton, Prince of Leinster, whose acts are given at the 15th of November. As from many other saints bearing the same name, and who are mentioned in the Martyrology of Talag, and in the commemor and in the commentaries of Saint Ongus, at the 1st and 7th of January the 21st of February, the 27th of March, the 11th of May, the 9th of October, and the 14th of December. A very ancient biography, or rather, compendious life, of this saint has been published by Colgan. It defects, its defects are very apparent, and the manuscript from which it was printed had been in part defaced by ink. This life was taken from a Salmonkin MS. It contains, without doubt, some gross fables and many errors. From this record, however, we shall be obliged to extract whatever unobjectionable particulars it embraces, with some additional information supplied from Colgan's notes. Fintan was brother to St. Finlugain, and son to Pippin son of Tool, who lived at a place called Cleoc, according to the life of this saint. But according to a commentator on Ungus, his father was named Dimon, who descended from Murid Mandareg, king of Ulster. The mother of our saint was also was named Alina, and was said to be the daughter of Artgale, or Lenin, and she was of no noble birth, belonging to a family that lived in, in the county of Limerick, as Colgan supposes. The early career of this saint seems to have been involved in some obscurity, not dissipated by his old bi biographer. Hence we are abruptly brought to narrate the following rather unconnected events. In the time of St. Fintan, a certain incredulous and irreligious ir king lived in a district then known as Kalathmog. To the king, Fintan had resolved on preaching God's holy word, but the dynast was unwilling to receive our saint on the object of his mission. Hearing that Fintan, accompanied by a number of holy monks, was on the way, Orders were dispatched to certain mowers in a field to bar the further progress of God's servants on that highway by which these traveled. At the same time, the king expressed himself in various uh, opprobrious terms regarding his expected visitants, and calling them impostors or seducers. Having arrived at a place denominated Kiel Ruiz, where there was water, the mowers were stationed in a field to oppose their passage. In vain, God's holy servants asked permission to proceed.
but insult was added to their refusal. However, a mighty tempest arose on the instant, and the great commotion of the elements ensued, accompanied by thunder and lightning. The very crops there, m matured, began to blaze, while the mowers, unable to pass the hedges of fire, were nearly blinded with smoke. Then, humbly asking for pardon for their offenses, St. Fenton blessed some water, which was applied to the eyes of the men uh, when their vision was restored. Wherefore, these men bound themselves to his perpetual service. Not only were certain temporal possessions bestowed, but even their children, grandchildren, and posterity were dedicated to him in the manner that understood by such, then understood by such engagements. In the lives of our Irish saints, we find several instances similar to the foregoing, where individuals, families, and even whole clans are said to have been, or are, are said to have bound themselves and their posterity to the service of particular saints. The exact nature of these services is not definitely described. But, it may be supposed, in most instances, such vows or dedications included a bond, expressed or implied, of giving tribute in money or in kind, for the building, repair, or maintenance of churches, monasteries, or other re religious establishments, for the support of clerics or monks attached to them. In the succeeding chapter of our, our Saints' Acts, we have only a portion of the first sentence preserved. From that, we learn how Fintan was at St. Comgall's school, where his master imposed a certain command, the nature of which is unknown. The remainder of this chapter was illegible in the copy of St. Fintan's biography which Colgan used, it having been blotted with ink, but he in infers from the in imperfect sentence remaining Fintan had been a disciple of St. Comgall, abbot of Bangor, who there founded his celebrated school about the middle of the 6th century. And from such an account, we may at least suppose that our saint was contemporous with St. Comgall. It is presumed of Bangor, and that he must have flourished after A.D. 550. In the fifth and sixth chapters of Fintan's life, we have some rather doubtful incidents de de described, which appear as having reference to that time he spent with St. Comgall. From the names of places contained in this life, his future mission and miracles for the most part seem to have been confined to the southern parts of Ireland. From the Acts of Our Saint, it is stated that sea rovers were accustomed to haunt our shores even before the Danish invasions commenced. St. Fintan once asked St. Finian of Mogbile to lend him a book of the Gospels for purposes of study, but he could not obtain that favor. His master, St. Comgall, heard of this refusal and said to our saint, quote, If faithful, perhaps, next day you will be in p possession of that book of Gospels, end quote. On the succeeding night, St. Fintan and his companions, fearing the approach of pirates, were on guard at the port. It had been rumored that sea rovers were about to despoil St. Comgall's religious establishment. In the beginning of this same night, however, their course had been directed to Mogbeal, which was St. Finian's city and among other robberies there perpetrated, they took away the aforesaid book of Gospels. Then, by circuitous route, companion, uh, those pirates reached the place where Fintan and his companions were on guard. They had resolved on attacking the city of Bangor, but behold, a large tree, near which St. Fintan watched and prayed, was suddenly uprooted by a violent tempest and cast upon their ships, lying near the shore. Except one of these, all other vessels were broken to pieces and submerged, 
The Book of Gospels and other effects in possession of those pirates were then re recovered. In the schools of Bangor, scriptural studies were not ne negle neglected. As Saint Finian, sorry, as Saint Fintan with his companions had been engaged reading the gospel during a spring season, a certain leper came to Saint Comgall. So runs the legend, and he de demanded bread, which should be made from corn lately ripened. At that season, it seemed impossible to procure what he required. Nevertheless, Saint Fintan desired this leper to follow the oxen and plant seed in a field they were plowing. Seed having been cast into the first furrow, turned, corn immediately grew up and ripened, so that the bread was obtained for this leper in a miraculous manner, and was taken from grain thus prematurely produced. While Fintan was resting in the place called Kel Fintain, a certain very corpulent man named Lothraid, then laboring under some loathsome bodily distemper, ruled over this part of the country. He is said to have died of this complaint after he had become a great burden to himself and to his servants. Afterwards, people living in this part of the country desired the saint to take up his abode there, so that they might manifest the highest respect towards him. But Fintan went to a place called Tuloch Benane, where he intended to reside. Certain British strangers, notwithstanding, would not allow him to remain in, in, in this place. Departing from it, our saint said, quote, Although you expel me hence, you shall not be honored here, and your name shall be known only to very few, but a certain woman and a stranger will dwell in it, when the same place will honor me. End quote. The prophecy was afterwards fulfilled. A holy virgin named Ernate, daughter to King Kianacht, came from the northern part of Ireland and dwelt in Tulak Benane. Afterwards, Saint Fintan went to a certain hill which was called Caber. At a time, the writer, at a time, the writer of his acts lived. There, Fintan intended to remain. But an angel appeared to him, said, quote, It is not decreed that you will re remain here. However, this place must honor you. And as a token of my promise, you shall see a bell coming hither through the air. End quote. Wherefore, looking towards heaven, he saw a bell, which was heard tolling as it descended. It rested on a rock and full in, in their presence. This bell was of black color, and hence it, it was called Dub Labhar, which in Latin is interpreted Nigra Sonans, or in English, the Black Toller. Like many similar objects among Irish and Britons, it was formerly held in great veneration. Much about the same time, a religious man named Kuan sent one of his disciples to St. Finton, Whilst this disciple moved on his way, it was thought a demon approached and took, and took bodily possession of him. Saint Fintan is related to have exercised this demon. Immediately, immediately he departed from the monk and entered a neighboring rock. By the power of God, we are told, he remained here in a state of perpetual imprisonment, not being able to inflict further injury on any human being. After this, occurrence, St. Fintan is said to have reached a place denominated Dunbliesk. This the Lord has destined for his habitation. It is identical with Dune in the county of L Limerick. In the Leobar Briac, the following quartain is given as a prophecy of St. Comgall that his alumnus should settle at Dunbliesk, its more ancient name. My dear alumnus Fintan shall erect his sacred city at the fort we call. 
the dun of blesk, and then he shall protect the poor and the weak, and pray for all mankind. The site of St. Fintan's old monastery is not known at present in Dune, nor can the oldest in inhabitant give any information as to where it stood, nor is its existence even remembered in any current popular tr tr tradition. At Dunbliask, St. Fintan was received with much honor, and he was hospitably entertained by Columbanus, son to Kinkada. The flesh of a cow and calf with some milk had been prepared at a banquet, where seven companions sat down with St. Fintan. One of these was his brother, named Finlugain, or Finlog. Fintan predicted that his brother should pass over the sea and die in exile from his native country. At a time when the author of our saint's acts flourished, Finn Lugain's memory was venerated in many places. Columbanus, the entertainer of our saint, said to Fintan, quote, I assign this place to thee, and for thy honor, show me therefore the spot which I must remove, end quote. Saint Fintan, his companions, and Saint Columbanus went south of the city and near its principal street. There a mutual agreement was entered into between those saints. Columbanus asked how his baggage should be conveyed. Fintan rang, then rang his bell. Immediately two deer issued forth from an adjoining wood and tamely presented themselves before those de devout men. Having placed St. Columbanus's effects on the horns of one, our saint said, quote, O Columbanus, follow this deer wheresoever he shall proceed until you come to where foxes shall issue from their dens, and there shall you remain, end quote. Having placed the luggage of his brother, Finn Lugain, on the horns of the other deer, Fintan then said, quote, Do you follow this animal in whatever di direction he shall go? End quote. That course taken led towards the, the sea, where Finn Lugain found a vessel. On board of this, he passed over in, into Albania, as had been ordained. In Scotland, he lived and died. Afterwards, he there awaited a future resurrection of the living and the dead. On a certain day, being afflicted with a grievous headache, an attendant named Faradoc came to St. Fintan, said, quote, Today, there appear to be signs of health and joy in your countenance, end quote. Fintan replied, quote, And justly should I rejoice, for on tomorrow our dearly beloved friend Columba shall come to visit us. Therefore, do you quickly prepare some corn for the mill, end quote. Quote, that I would willingly do, end, end quote, said Far Faradoc, quote, if there were water to turn it, end quote. However, through the intervention of St. Fintan, the millstone began to move and grind for three days and three nights without cessation. This was looked upon as a great miracle, because there had been no water or human assistance afforded during the process of grinding. During this visit, which was made to our saint, with whom Columba and a number of holy men remained for some time, abundance of bread was su supplied for their use. Then St. Columba bestowed in perpetuity to St. Fintan a city, which, which is called Kel Mytog, with all those services by its inhabitants to the possessor. While St. Fintan was stopping near a great river in the city of Tyre Diglas, certain mimics and buffoons uh, approached him. They asked Fintan to supply them with some fish to eat. He told them truly, he had not what they sought. 
One of the mimics then said, quote, The water is near thee, and if thou art the holy man thou art said to, to be, we shall easily obtain what we ask. Saint in end quote. Saint Fintan replied, quote, It is not more difficult for the Almighty to produce to procure a fish than to produce the water itself. End quote. Then, calling his disciples, he sent them to a well which lay near nearer to them than the river. In a vessel, together with some water, they brought a large fish. But when those mimics thought to remove the fish's bones, they found it impossible to separate them, even by the aid of an iron instrument, whereupon they said, quote, Although our fish is a tough one, however, it shall not be left here by us. End quote. Taking their departure, they then carried it along with them, but an eagle hovering over their party suddenly descended, and snatching away the fish, bore it to a tree. This stood over the well already mentioned. The fish was dropped into the spring whence it had been taken. The author of Our Saints Acts informs us that for the sake of brevity he uh, omitted writing many other mir miracles that, though Fintan, the Almighty, was pleased to effect, through Fintan, the Almighty was pleased to effect. He adds, also on account of numerous mir miracles which Fintan wrote, wrought and continued to work in his biographer's time, it would be impossible for man to recount or even to retain them in memory. In his acts, our saint is said to have attained the incredible age of 260 years, and to have been quite decrepit at the time of his death. The year when this occurred is not recorded. His ancient biographer asserts that God, who can accomplish whatever he pleases on the earth, in heaven, on the sea, or under the abyss, was, spe was specially desirous of prolonging St. Fintan's life. When very old, the saint's cheeks were furrowed by wrinkles. The author of St. Fintan's Acts gives us no particulars regarding the day and year of his death, nor even does he mention that particular place where it occurred, nor the circumstances attending it. But from St. Angus commentators and from other sources, we learn that the day of St. Fintan's death fell on the 3rd of January. It is generally, generally allowed, however, that he must have flourished in the 6th century. On the 3rd of January, the festival of St. Fintan had been celebrated formally in the parish of Dune and county of Limerick. It forms a portion of the Archdiocese of Cashel, or Diocese of Imli. At this date, the saint is commemorated in the Filier Angris, in the Martyrologies of Talog and of Dongal. According to the latter calendar, the saint belonged to the race of Fiatok Finn, monarch of Ireland, and he was a descendant of Harriman. After the example of his master, our Lord Jesus Christ, this saint ministered as a servant not only to his guests, but even to his br brethren. He often unloosed the shoes from their feet, which he washed after their labors. In him no guile was found. He judged and condemned no person. To none did he return evil for evil. He was never found to be angry or disturbed in mind. He was never known to mock any person, nor to grieve at any calamity. Peace, compassion, and piety were throned in his heart. He always manifested the same equanimity of temper. He preserved such a heavenly serenity of countenance that he seemed to have abandoned even the imperfections of human nature. For these and such like virtues, he now reigns in supreme felicity more brightly than the sun shines in the firmament, 
and more effulgent than the rays are spread over illuminated space. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, through the prayers of Saint Fintan of Dune and all your saints, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.